Product Launch Mega Livestream. I'm David Bain, author of Marketing Now, and your host over the next eight hours. Yes, eight hours. How many of you are going to stay for that one? Uh, during which I'll be joined by 33 of the world's leading marketers to discuss their favorite tips in Marketing Now, the book, and to provide you with loads and loads and loads of actionable insights. So um, we are taking the actionable insights from this. Um, I've got the paperback and I've got the hardback here in front of me and um, just released, uh, hot off the press, um, brand new copies of Marketing Now the book and um, so many incredible uh, tips inside there. And of course, if you are joining us live, it is fantastic to have you here. So uh, type into the chat uh, where in the world you're joining us from and also let us know why you're attending the Marketing Now book launch, you know, what kind of business you're in, what you want to achieve yourself, you know, what kind of marketing challenges you've got maybe as well, what, what you want to learn today as well. So let us know a little bit about that in the chat and um, I'll have a look at that just in a second. Um, but um, while you do that, uh, I'm just gonna be sharing a couple of slides with you just to uh, introduce you to what's going to be happening today. So first of all, um, we're going to be meeting a gentleman called Ian Anderson Gray. So we're going to be having a lovely uh, discussion about the background to the book itself. Uh, moving on to at, and now I'm going to go for GMT. I'm going to go for UK Times. There are lots of um, uh, time zones around the world, of course. I've got um, uh, Eastern Time, Eastern Standard Time on there as well. Um, that's 9.30 Eastern Standard Time, 2.30 p.m. GMT. Uh, we're going to be having the first uh, main session um, based upon the first part of the book called Technical Success. And um, joining me for that one will be Dixon Jones, Kevin and Dig, Pam Unkst, and Alina Ghost. The next session after that, 3.30 p.m. GMT, uh, Technical Success Workshop. So what we're going to be having is we're going to be having um, the one session, the initial session um, for a part of the book. Uh, and that session will be focusing in on the advice within the book. And then the second session, uh, which is this workshop that I was talking about for the the, the, the first part of the book, uh, Technical Success Workshop, um, is going to be implementing all of the stuff that is uh, in that part of the book. So helping us do that will be Bridget Randolph, Chris Green, John Alderson, and Nick Wilsden. Moving on to the next one, which is at 4.45 p.m. GMT, 11.45 Eastern Standard Time. Uh, moving on to part two of the book, Creative Success. Uh, joining me for that one will be Amy Woods, Julia Bramble, Phil Palin, and Steve Linney. And the next one at 5.45 GMT, that will be the Creative Success Workshop. So the implementation of part two of three of the book, uh, giving great example, different websites that I'm going to just show you examples of in a second there. And um, joining me for that one, Making, Jan Alunga, Rebecca Redis, and Alisa Meredith. At 7 p.m. GMT, the promotion of success, the third of three parts of the book. Um, the third part is called Promotion of Success. Uh, we've got AJ Wilcox, Alex Tuchlova, Brad Geddes, and Kirk Williams joining me for that one there. And the workshop in relation to that part of the book will be at 8 p.m. GMT. Aaron Levy, Amy Bishop, Lexi Mills, and Joe Martinez. Finishing us up with a closing launch party with Dennis Yu, Mark Traphagen, Mike King, Paul Lovell, and Virginia Nussie. So a whole lot of people joining me there, a whole lot of great sessions, I'm sure, to come. Um, got Natasha saying in the chat, nice to see so many new and old faces in the lineup. Good luck, everyone. Um, Kate from Lancashire, a person of travel consultant. I'm a marketer for over a decade, but looking to understand how to apply my for my small business. Alina Ghost, um, she's going to be a guest later on as well. She's saying she's looking forward to this, looking forward to having you on there as well, Alina. Now, I wanted to show you quickly as well the four websites that we're going to be deep diving into. One is called Sky Factory. One is called... I'm looking for the brand name here as well. It's Succulents Box. That's who's, uh, and and this is about uh, this is a bit of a gardener's um, kind of a specialist plant website. Uh, we've then got a, a specialist children's hospital, and then we've got a digital marketing agency. So those are four websites. They're very very different businesses. Um, what I did was I emailed um, a few people and asked 
them if they wanted their websites featured. And I selected the websites that were really quite different. So I wanted a, a, an e-commerce type business, a B2B business, B2C business as well. So I think they're really nicely represented in terms of the different types of businesses um, out there that uh, are going to be chatted about. And that's what we're going to be doing in the, the workshop sessions. We're going to be deep diving into those businesses and uh, peeling out those, those actionable insights from the book itself. Um, as you was saying, uh, hey everyone, this looks great. And uh, David uh, Kilkelly saying hi, Ian David, and everyone else. Um, hello, David. Um, thank you so much for joining in. Um, it's great to see some people um, starting to interact and watching live. Please, you know, let us know your thoughts in the chat. Um, let us know what's happening from your perspective there as well. But let's um, bring in um, the gentleman <laughs> that is uh, the first guest. Um, I'll introduce him. Briefly by saying Ian Anderson Gray is a man who helps entrepreneurs level up their impact, authority and profits using the live video confidently. And you can find him over at IAG.me. Welcome, Ian. Hi, David. It's great to be here. Are you feeling tired or are you ready for your eight hour marathon? Can you ask me at 10 p.m.? No, I, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm rocking and rolling. I'm ready. I'm, I'm, oh. I'm, I feel as if... Um, Nothing can go wrong. <laughs> well, it's gone well so far. I'm, I'm excited to be here. I'm really honored, actually, to be your first guest uh, on this Marathon Live show. And uh, yeah, I've, I've got your book here, which, which is which I've been reading. And uh, yeah, I'm excited to talk about that and loads of other stuff today. Thank you so much for coming on. It's great to have you on. You know, Ian's a master of um, live broadcasting. You, you've been doing it for a long time and, um, you know, love your podcast as well. And it's it's great always to have conversations with you. I think the challenge when we have conversations is to cut them off and actually uh, know that there's a time limit at the end of them. But uh, we do have that, unfortunately. But uh, Well, it's, we a good, can... it's, a good, it's a good problem to have, isn't it, really? I mean, it, it, I'm sure you've had those conversations with people where, you're not really sure what to say and the conversation starts to yeah and they're a bit embarrassing so we don't really have that problem we don't we don't no um so i, I i'm not I, I think it'd be great to have a, a good chat about the, the whole production of the book because obviously i didn't just write it it was a case of uh doing a massive live stream first of all and a bit of a blabber to actually get all the content edited and, and, and written as well and i'm mm. sure um, you, you've done a lot of those types of things as well, or are you intending to do something similar at some point in the future yourself? Well, it's funny. Like a, a number of people have said to me in the last few months, "When are you writing your next book?" And I just look at people like you, and and I and I know how much goes into it. And so that was actually one of the things I wanted to ask you about and talk to you about because, in one sense, doing a live stream. I mean, you, you could say, okay, what, what David has done here is he's done a live stream, he's got loads of experts on, he's basically written down, copied all of what they've said, bunged it in a book, and that's it. But as we all know, it's not that simple. I mean, obviously, there's doing a live stream, you, you've, you've managed to get so much material from it. But I'd love to know a little bit more about how you, how you came up with the idea, first of all, and then how did you then transition it from that live stream or those series of live streams into the book? Yeah, I mean, I think the first serious live stream, by serious live stream, I mean live stream of over two hours long, I did was in December 2015. Mm -hmm. And that was a bit of a, a recap at the end of the year. I remember I started um, taking podcasts, taking podcasting seriously in a September 2014 it was that I launched Digital Marketing Radio and you know, obviously I was I was kind of getting into um, kind of speed in December 2014 but by the end of 2015 I'd probably interviewed by uh, over 100 people actually and I had a great collection of guests and I was thinking well it, it would be very important to actually keep these relationships and, mm -hmm. and not just interview someone one, uh, once and then forget about it and I, I think a, a wonderful way to do it is to have an end of year recap of the show, the content that people shared, and perhaps get people's up to date thoughts on what is relevant in in, in marketing you know, at, at that present moment in time. So I, I think I had about thirty people or so on 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 live show at the time, and it was it was lovely. Uh, we were actually chatting a little bit before we went on air about Blab. And mm. Blab was a, a wonderful platform at the time. I, I, I think, as we said, it was probably of its time, and that everyone thought live streaming was incredible and jumped on any live stream that happened to be happening. So it, it, you 
tended to get incredible engagement. If you had an audience of of a couple of hundred, then then a hundred of them would have turned up and actually watched you live. Nowadays, you you probably get a very small percentage of your community that's likely to turn up and watch you live because there's so much other content out there. So mm. it was it was it was great fun to be able to do that. Um, of course, it was only two hours long. I didn't really have any intention to make that one into a book. That 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 wasn't in my thought process. Um, however, I thought. Okay, um, if I do this again, uh, if I do this in December 2016, then maybe I can have double the amount of content because I will have another year's worth of podcast episodes and another year's worth of guests that, that have come on my shows. So um, I, I did that and um, I, I ended up having over 100 guests come on that one. I had about four, four and a bit hours of content and and made that content into into the book that was called digital marketing in 2017 and i guess that that gave me the bug yeah well i i think that the really important thing that comes from all of this is that people think of live video or live streaming as just the live element don't they so with with blab or with crowdcast or or with you know whatever facebook live linkedin live you know you do the live and then you press the end broadcast button and then that's it. And people, I think, miss a trick, don't they? In, in that you can turn this into a piece of evergreen content. You can turn this into, say, a, a community. You can actually kind of, with the comments on Facebook Live or LinkedIn Live, you can actually create a community of, of discussion. Or you can make it into a blog post or a podcast, which I know yeah, you've, you've done a few times. But what I love about what you've done is you've gone that one step further and you've made it into like... a an actual piece of a real thing in the real world, a book, you know, and uh, which is which is really cool. And this this is something that will last for a lot longer. And it's great. It's great, obviously great for brand awareness. So you've you've taken those relationships that you built over time. And I think that was another really important thing about what you said is you you met all these people, you invested in those relationships, but you didn't just leave it there. You kept on with those relationships. And now today you're doing a, an eight eight hour live stream. And how many people have you got on it? You've got all these people over the years, um, which is really, really cool. Um, so yeah, how did you then create the book, this book now from from the live live video last year? Well, I think the lesson that I learned from the production of the first book mm. was that you can have the content created in video form and then you can get that content transcribed. But then that's not a book. You know, some people will yeah. be lazy and publish uh, just a transcript as a book, but that's not a great user experience and that does nothing for your brand when you do that. And realistically, you have to rephrase a lot of it if not everything yeah. um yeah. and ensure that it's written in, in a way that people read and really enjoy I, i'm sure many many people watching i'm sure you sophie and you you've read a transcript and it's okay but it's yeah. it's not a great experience for whatever reason people speak differently than they write you know and people expect to read the, the, and, and to consume the content um, in a written form the same way that people write and you absolutely have to do that so you know i've taken the written content um had it transcribed but then rewritten the transcription completely and, and obviously also categorized everything as well when i had people come on the live show i didn't tell them beforehand uh, to tell me what subject they were going to talk about. Uh, I, I wanted specifically to give them um, the ability just to share anything they wanted and ask them one simple question. You know, what's one piece of actionable advice that you want to share with the audience right now? And and everyone shared the, the, the one piece of actionable marketing advice that they thought uh, was particularly mm. appropriate to share. And, and everyone obviously is focused in on, on on different areas and that then you got get the content you get the answers and um but then you you have the the categorization of everything that uh, as i mentioned as well so I, I categorized everything afterwards and i thought it really fitted quite nicely into three different sections 12 different chapters uh, and that that yeah. makes a really nice book if you, if you want to aim for a book um you you want to try and break it up you want to try and aim for roughly sixty thousand words which which this is about that's great. Yeah. So, I mean, that would have been 
a really lovely feeling when you realize that you can split it into these three sections and you've got these 12 chapters. Uh, and I think you're right about, yeah, you can't just do the, the you know, user software like otter.ii or even rev.com yeah. and just get everything transcribed, then bung it into the book. I mean, you could do that. Well, and I'm sure well, people do, but I mean... It, it, Exactly. I actually used the the, uh, the Rev servers, but um, you're probably talking about roughly 97% accurate, and that's just not good enough at all. And then I went in there and made sure that everything was read was edited and um, and uh, was correct in terms of the way that people said it to begin with. So things yeah. like brand names, domain names, uh, tend to be pretty rubbish um yes. through, through, through a service like um like, like rev i'm not I'm not particularly having a go at rev just any transcription service will tend to struggle with brand names and domain names so you have to go through and, and make sure all, all yeah. of those are right to begin with um I've got elizabeth saying hi elizabeth here from swift polling i uh, looking forward to this david great to have you here elizabeth mm. um so um you know if, if you're if you're liking the content that's being shared um please share um this particular url it's um craig cost Crowdcast.io slash e slash marketing now. You can copy and paste the top URL. And if you share it with your friends, that would be very much appreciated too, as well. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, I mean, you were saying rev.com and you know, I use them to begin with, but um, then I had a perfect transcript um, after I edited it and got, got those mm -hmm. domains corrected. And I used the perfect transcript to upload um, with segments of the original live stream when I was sharing it on social media. And, and so the, there was re real value in doing that. But then once the, the perfect transcript was produced, that's when I went through everything and categorized everything into yeah. um, different con di different advice tip categories and then found that it probably fitted into about 12 chapters from there that's awesome yeah i've, I've had a similar thing with with rev i mean i i love rev i think it's great for for captions and for transcriptions and services uh but they can never spell my name <laughs> they always spell my surname which is g-r-a-y with an e and i've even i've even contacted the customer services and i said how can i get your transcribers to get my name right and said oh just put it in the put it in the in the text file that you upload and i've tried everything it doesn't work they still spell it with an e so you know but it, it's it does save time it doesn't it does it's not going to do everything is it it's it, as I you know. say you you've had to you know you, but you didn't have to transcribe that out yourself which is what you would have had to oh, do yeah. all those years ago so so once you'd got it into those uh three three sections and those those 12 chapters and you'd got rid of um, some of the content, so for example, obviously, what tends to happen is people on a live stream, they go off on tangents, which sometimes are great, but you've got to get it into a, into a way that works really well for a book. What was the next stage once you, you'd done that, you'd put it all together? Because I know there's so much more. This is I'm asking you all of this, of course, not for um, not because I'm thinking about writing a book next year, but uh, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, what, what, what's, what's the next stage? Do you know um just before I get to that, um, just, just well, what, one other funny, funny anecdote yeah. in relation to uh, transcriptions. Um, one word that I remember people getting wrong every single time was when I talked about pay-per-click marketing. They kept on <laughs> right. They, they kept on writing paper paper-clip. Paper yeah, I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> Paperclip. Well, come on. <laughs> it could be. It could be a thing. Maybe, maybe you should. Uh, you should come with this new form of of marketing with a paperclip. It kind of reminds me of uh, the office. Remember that paperclip that used to kind of knock on the yeah, 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 yeah that's absolutely word. Yes, clippy, yeah. clippy. Yeah, word. That was it. Yeah. And the start going so down. Yeah. That's okay. Kind of a next stage in 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 relation to I mean the, the production of the book itself. Uh, I mean I uh, what I wanted to do was um, make it really actionable, and um, so I took different quotes um, from the book, and you know I'll just show you a random section if I can here um, in the book as well. And so that's a quote there from. I'm trying. It's very difficult to. To get my book in the right place, that's a, a quote from a chap called Mitch Joel. So every single one of the contributors, so there's 134 contributors. I've I've got tweets or mini quotes that that could be tweets, uh, and I think that's a really nice bite sized tip. Um, so uh, each tip is 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 nicely um, split up. There's one from um, Chris Green there, and 
you know, as well as being in sections, I think that people can pick it up and read those individual tips and then put it down and, and, and get something just incredibly useful, hopefully for their their, their day-to-day marketing lives uh, straight away from that. So I wanted uh, it to be really nicely structured like that. Um, and the next thing was really the, the design of the inside of the book. So um, you, hopefully you can see that in the camera there as well. So that's that's the beginning of a chapter there. So obviously I've got the, kind of the logo at the top of here and the chapter heading there as well and the, the nice in-depth there as well. So that's not the kind of thing that I can do myself. So I used a service called Jet Launch to design the inside of the book and, and that's a really great investment. Uh, I also used um, 99 Designs um, to actually design the the cover of the book, and you know, I, I, I'm I'm really happy with that. So, yeah, just subtly in the background, I've got pictures of everyone who who took part there yeah. as well. I've got a nice quote there. There's quite a lot of text on the page, but I think it's split up quite nicely, so it doesn't look too much. Um, you know, at the back there, I've got some nice um, nice testimonials there as well. That's just the paperback. Um, the the hard copy there as well. So I've got an extra. Um, introduction. You don't have a copy of this, Ian. <laughs> I know. I'm feeling very sad. I kind of I'm wanting it now. <laughs> <laughs> well, so, um, yeah. Go, go, go ahead, sir. I was going to say. You, you, so you said something about Jet Launch. I wasn't quite sure. So what do they do? Because so, uh, it makes sense with with 99 Designs for the design of it, and uh, you produ- you uh, produced all the text. Um, but what was what was this uh, this missing bit in the middle that I don't quite understand yet? So Jet Launch actually design the PDF, which becomes ah. your book on the inside. Um, so what you're not doing is you're not using a, a template on Word. Uh, you're, you're actually having your book designed. So, of course, I wrote my book in, in Word. Uh, I'm a PC man, I'm afraid. And, that's, uh, yeah, that's I, good. <laughs> and, and then uh, w- once I was happy with the content itself, I passed it over to them for the design and they come up uh, with with all kind of different designs for um, the obviously the uh, kind of praise for marketing now at the beginning of the book, then uh, I've got uh, the the content section. Um, So it really is just a nicely formed book. It's it's you know, I've I've self published it, and and there are advantages to self publishing. Mm. But I've also used professional services to produce the yeah. the design of the book as well as it was getting the book edited and yeah. and, and and produced internally as well. And I, I think that's important. Yeah, that's cool. I mean, yeah. So with all of these things, you could do everything absolutely yourself, uh, and I mean, you could even I suppose use your printer to print things out, but you'd be completely mad. So you've 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 got a service to do this, and you've you've given them. The word document and they've they've made it beautiful and then at that point it then needs to go to presumably to amazon and so I mean, how do you get it into the book format yeah i mean there's a couple of different services online that you can use to publish your book yourself um i used a combination between a service called ingram spark and kdp which is now amazon's way to actually publish books now amazon don't allow you to publish a hardcover so if you want a hardcover mm-hmm published you've got to go through another service uh, like ingram spark um, but ingram spark can publish directly to amazon uh, obviously amazon themselves will tend to be a little bit quicker in terms of the um, fulfillment of your book when someone p- places an order uh, so uh, i had a quick look at um, my my listing on amazon and it actually said that the, the hard cover one would be a bit to send it would, would take a few days to send but the the paperback would would go immediately and obviously the kindle version would go immediately so i'm i'm having the the, the kindle on the paperback um, through amazon and then the, the the hardback through ingram spark and and then i also contacted amazon to get all the listings linked together uh, it's important obviously when someone goes on and they see the book brand that they if they choose they can get the hardcover or paperback or kindle and they, and they don't have to go and search again to go and find mm-hmm. that that's awesome well yeah it's, it shows you how much goes into these things but it's still a lot easier than it used to be to c- create your own book i mean you don't have to worry about getting getting a publisher for example you can self-publish which is which is great I think yeah. a lot of people actually choose not to have a publisher now because mm. the I think you're lucky to get ten um, percent of uh, any kind of book revenue. But if you uh, self-publish, then it's for, for kind of paperback. Yeah. It could be something like forty percent for Kindle. Um, it can be up to seventy percent. Um, so there's certainly a big 
potential financial incentive to mm-hmm. self-publish as long as if you, you do the marketing yourself. But I, I've been told by a few big uh, kind of pe- people who have published books um, through publishing deals that uh, a lot of these publishing houses don't do marketing for you anyway. And, yeah. uh, and all they do is they get the book published. So you're still responsible for the marketing of the book. Yeah. So so, so there's a lot of positives to self-publishing. Yeah, I may try at some point in the future to get a book deal and, and be able to compare myself directly but it's self-publishing yeah. is a good option for many people i think so and it's a similar thing in, in the music field you know because i know somebody who's getting some cds produced yes cds still exist and he's a he's a classical musician and he's actually having to he he does have a recording contract but he has to do he has to pay for everything he has to pay for the publicity he has to pay for so yeah it's it, things things have changed a little bit so <laughs> i wanted to ask you though so this live stream that you're doing uh, because like we and you came on my podcast and my show to talk about this about the whole idea of a marathon live stream and um you know uh a lot of people will probably think you're completely mad for doing this but there's i, I want to ask you to like a two-part question really which is first of all why are you doing eight hours you know and and second of all how on earth do you keep going for eight hours um Drugs? No. Uh, <laughs> um, look, um, eight hours feels about the right time to delve into enough um, detail about the content in the book because there's, there's a lot of tips, uh, kind of content in there as well. So I'd like to get a lot of people's opinion. I'd like to involve many of the the contributors from the book. So I said there was 134 people in the book. Uh, there's 33 people, many of them from the book that are joining me for, for this live stream series. It's great to involve people with that as well. Um, um, and it's just, uh, it's a crazy thing to do. Uh, it's, <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I think you've got to position yourself slightly differently from yeah. a content perspective than, than than other people. And to a certain degree, this is just, just something different to do. Yeah, I totally agree with you. Because, yeah, I mean, li- it's still amazing how many people, how many businesses are not utilizing live streaming. But it is not as unusual as it once was. And so you're differentiating yourself. So the other, the other thing is, like... Um, when you've got so many guests, because I mean, obviously in this half hour, you just got me. So hopefully that's not too difficult to, well, I don't know, matter of opinion, whether uh, having me as your first guest is going to be a good thing or not. But after this, you know, you've got four per half hour. How do you plan to have so many guests? Because obviously you've got to get everyone on those particular times. Have you got any tips on, on that? Well, there is. It, it's about four per per hour. Um, so so yeah. it goes into longer sessions. Um, after this one, um, it's. Uh, I think involving lots of people, you you have to give them as much direction as you can with regards to to how to join, what equipment to use, how to use that equipment, how the sessions been structured. Because obviously, once you go live, you can't really do too yeah. much in terms of helping people come on or if they're having technical challenges so you, you have to give as many as much direction as you can beforehand you have to invite people on who you are relatively confident or uh, you, you know that are going to come on with a decent internet connection and a, and a reasonable microphone and sound okay as well as knowing yeah. what they're talking about as well but <laughs> it's part of the fun of doing it live you just never know quite what's going to happen uh, you, you sound like a masochist, you know, but, uh, <laughs> you, you, but, but yeah, I suppose you, you also need to, to plan for when things are going to go wrong. So, you know, I, I know, I think we talked about this, but if your internet goes down, what, what is your backup plan? You know, do you, I mean, so a lot of us have these things and you can use like a hotspot. I mean, I suppose you, have you got, have you got any backup plans in place if things go wrong? I, I do have um, uh, an option to to tether from my phone if necessary. Um, it's not plugged into my computer computer directly, so it would have to be a couple of minutes uh, fix. But y- you have to have that in the the back of your mind yeah. if you're doing a mega live stream. You know w- what would happen if if X fails, and it's good to go through the different scenarios. Mm-hmm. I think the challenge is when you're doing it for the first few times you can't actually think of the different potential scenarios yeah. that could happen and you kind of have to just experience it to actually check that yeah. on the list and think um if this happens again i know how i'm going to deal with it yeah. so you, you kind of have it in the back of your mind after after dealing with it 
Yeah, definitely. And I think we've all had those those terrifying times when things go wrong. And But actually, as you again said to me before, you know, if things go wrong, people are usually very patient and, uh, you know, they, they, you know they'll, they'll keep with you, which, which is great. And also using a system like Crowdcast. I mean, Crowdcast is pretty robust and, you know, it's not like Facebook Live, which can be a little bit buggy sometimes. So yeah, so that's exactly. Exactly. But it's all it's all a learning curve. So um, we've just about come to the mm, um, end have. of this particular session. And um, it was wonderful having you on, Ian. I really appreciate it. Can you just um, remind the viewers uh, where they can get hold of you if, if they would like to do so? Yeah, well, please do get in touch. Uh, my website is iag.me. So find, find me there. My podcast is uh, the Confident Live Marketing Podcast. So wherever you go to find podcasts, you, you can search for that. And uh, probably Twitter is is my social network of, of choice. Uh, you can find me just uh, iag.me. That's I-A-G-D-O-T-M-E. Superb stuff. Well, thanks so much for coming on. Um, we're, we're going to be um, just taking a break for two minutes, um, just so I can go into the green room and go get the other guests, then come back. Um, now, from a viewing perspective, just stay exactly where you are. Um, the, the screen should go blank for a couple of minutes, then we should come come back on. So um, don't go anywhere at all, and um, we'll see you in a couple of minutes. Thanks again, Ian. Thanks, David. Bye. So Ian, just to let you know, um, I think that um, we're still live streaming, but um, I'll, I'll disappear just now. now uh, if, if and unless you disappear, then you're going to be um, probably retaining you, you, you staying in and and and. and would you and like me to? Would you like me to? Would you like me to stay? It's it it's it's up to you. It's just to let you know that um you you'll be talking to the audience probably um by yourself um uh, until I come back and pour the audience into the next session. Okay. Well, okay. I'll stay for I'll stay for a couple of minutes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> see, see. Okay. Well, there we go. This is this is when technology. Uh, I, I don't know whether Crowdcast uh, allows you to go into the green room and, and then back again, but uh, it looks like I'm here. So uh, I hope you've been enjoying the show. Uh, it's only a half hour into David's eight hour live stream, which is really really cool. And uh, uh, yeah, if you haven't picked up his book, it's um, if you just find uh, go to marketingnow.com i think it is oh, it's not marketingnow.com but search for it on amazon i will find out in fact david when he's back you can probably find a url for for this in fact let me just find it out so if you're watching live let me know where in the world you are from it'd be lovely to uh, to, to know um where you are from and uh, i'm in just south of manchester in the uk I'm multitasking at the moment. I'm just finding out the URL for the book. There we go. It is marketingnowbook.com. Marketingnowbook.com. So you can you can find that uh, find that out. Uh, but yeah, it it was uh, it was great to to be on uh, uh, David's first guest to talk about uh, his book, and I'm really interested in finding out how you go from a podcast or a live video into a book, into making a book. And this is something that I'm going to be thinking about for next year uh, as I come to terms with the idea of writing a book myself. Um, but definitely having a podcast and having guests on and, and creating all that content. There's so much content that you can, you can have um, from these other mediums that you can then turn into a book. So I'll be interested, if you're watching, have you got a podcast? Do you do any live video shows? Are you thinking of writing a book? Let us know in the comments. That would be great. Uh, Dixon Jones is in LinkedIn. He is set up and ready to go, although it's I think the connection is being a little bit dodgy. Dixon, I'm sure that David will sort you out and technology will all be fine. And uh, hopefully I'm not going to be here for the next half an hour because uh, I've got to pick up the kids from school. So, um, yeah. So um, I can't remember who is going to be on the next bit, but if you can uh, stay for a little bit longer or if you, you can pop in and out of the live stream, or if you want, you can, of course, stay for the whole eight-hour live stream. Um, David is broadcasting on Crowdcast, so that's where you can get involved with the main discussion. But uh, he's also broadcasting on LinkedIn Live and on Facebook 
and uh, everywhere else. Um, I'm not sure what Dixon Jones was saying on LinkedIn. He says, no, I'm not. But uh, there we go. So, um, yeah, so let, let me know if you have written a book or whether you are thinking of writing a book and whether uh, you are uh, whether you have a podcast and whether you're you're thinking about all those things that, that would be great so um i don't really know what else to say i think uh, that's that's probably um everything for now uh but yeah if you've got any questions for david uh, let us know in the comments so uh just looking back so got quite a few people here from the uk i wonder whether you are watching from outside of the uk uh, it is 2.35 in the UK, so obviously, depending if you're in the US, uh, it's probably the morning, so it's like 9.35, I think, Eastern, 6.35, if I'm right in Pacific, well, it's a bit early for maybe some of you. Um, Andy Simpson is saying, watching from Georgia, but from Leeds. Wow, that's exciting. What are you doing in Georgia? Georgia is a great place. I've technically not been to, I've been to the airport, I've been to Atlanta, uh, but I'm not, I, I, that doesn't really count. If you be, go to the airport, it doesn't really count, but um, that's one state I would love to go to, so I hope you're having a great time from Georgia. And I was born in Leeds, so yeah, I was only there for a couple of, well, maybe eight months, so I don't really remember it, um, but uh, it's a great Yorkshire town, and apparently, because I was born there, I could play cricket for Yorkshire, so um uh, Dixon in uh, Dixon Jones is on LinkedIn. Uh, he says, "Feel free to let David know he is an amateur trying to get on the next hour." I followed the instructions. I thought, "So, Dixon, I don't know uh, what you're trying to do. Are you uh, you you need to to go to the Cradcast link? You need to just uh, say say hello in the chat. I don't see you here, so if you can go to the chat, um, hopefully you can see me speaking on." Crowdcast, uh, and if you just say something, say hello, then David should be able to um, then bring you in. So there we go. Uh, what's happening here then? So, so anywhere, anywhere else in the world that people are watching from, while we wait for David and the team to come back. And this is this basically just shows that technology doesn't always work, even with the likes of Crowdcast and with live streaming. You've got to be prepared for things to go wrong from time to time. Things do. And actually, as, as, and I agree with what David was saying uh, just before uh, the, the, the last segment ended, that when I was live streaming to begin with, uh, a lot of things went wrong. Like the internet went down. Sometimes I couldn't connect to Facebook or, or YouTube. Uh, sometimes my microphone wasn't switched on or, or there was an echo or, or something like that. And all these things were so frustrating. It was sometimes that I wanted to throw my computer out of the window and <laughs> pull my hair out. But uh, through those, those difficult times, through these the stresses and, and through the technology sometimes not working, I learned loads and I was able to develop uh, a list of, of things like a checklist, really, of all the things that I need to think about before going live. And then, so that's the technology side of things. But of course, when you're doing any kind of live stream, there is the, the whole confidence thing, getting in front of the camera. And interestingly, if you were to have told me like four or five years ago, would I be teaching people how to live stream confidently? I would have told you, you were completely nuts. Uh, because I was I was really quite stressed about the idea of going live. I, for some reason, I was building it up in my head as a really big, difficult thing. Uh, but I suppose uh, my background, I trained as a professional singer, and I was able to work out really the, the steps needed to gain that confidence to get in front of the camera. So that's the other thing. By doing more and more and more of these live streams, you get more confident. Uh, the first couple of that you do, you may think they went awful, but over time, You'll get better and better and better, which is um, which is really important. It's the only way to improve. So not only will will you be get more you get more confident, also the the live streams themselves, the live videos will just become better quality because you'll learn what works and what doesn't work, which uh, is really really important. And then of course the third thing 
that you you'll learn as well as you do more and more of these is the content you know what on earth do you talk about on these live streams uh, and this is something i was really impressed with with david cook uh, just the way that he was able to turn uh, these live streams all these experts and, and marketing experts on uh, the live stream last year that david did um and turn it into a book but actually categorize it put it into three different categories uh, and 12 chapters uh, and it's just sometimes there's a real beauty in those things coming together uh, parallel with my own experience when i was starting to, to, to write a lot of content on live video i quickly realized the the, the three main three main barriers that people had uh, I, I worked out this from talking with clients and and writing about this and finding out that the three main barriers that people have to live video are confidence in front of the camera, uh, confidence with the technology, and confidence with the content and marketing. Somebody very uh, kindly helped me get them rhymed. So there's the, there's the camera fear, the live video camera fear, the, the live video tech and gear, and the live video content marketing sphere. Maybe the last one's not quite so good. But yeah, that's what David was able to do with this, is to get those three categories and 12 chapters, uh, which, is, which is great. Um, so, yes, Samuel Marshall is asking, where can I find the book? You can find the book at uh, marketingnowbook.com. Uh, and actually, you can order uh, the book now from amazon.com or amazon.co.uk. But if you want to sign up, sign up for more information, just go to marketingnowbook.com or search uh, Amazon. Uh, or Amazon, amazon.com or amazon.co.uk or whatever, and you can, you can find it there. Um, marketing now by David Bain. So yeah, uh, I don't quite know what's what's happening. Uh, David is uh, not here, and the guests are here. So let me just see. I sent him a message, or sent him an email. Let's have a look. Check my email. See whether he's emailed. Uh, here we go. Any emails? Okay. <laughs> Uh, don't you love live streaming? Well, I have to say it's great to, to see uh, we've got 38 people watching live on LinkedIn Live, so hello to you. Uh, I don't know whether I've not got my Facebook tab open, but I am uh, I know that David's streaming this on Facebook as well, and I've shared it out on Facebook. So if you're watching on Facebook, again, welcome. If you're watching on, uh, on Crowdcast, again, welcome. As I said before, let us know where in the world you're watching from, and... Uh, whether you have a podcast, whether you are thinking about writing a book, and um, also, why don't you share your favorite marketing tip as well? Uh, in the room. There we go. Send them a message there. Technology is great when it works, isn't it? So, but we're still, we're still live streaming. So yeah, so Samuel, I hope you've uh, you've been able to find that. Uh, just go to uh, Amazon or go to marketingnowbook.com. So yeah, I, I'll just share a little bit of my my experience with with repurposing and uh, my idea of, of a book um, because I know this is going to be of interest to a lot of you who are tuning into this. You're thinking about maybe you're writing a book yourself and maybe you've been put off with of the idea, you think it's too complicated. If you missed the first half hour, I was asking David about how, how you do that and came up with some really great tips and, and some of the things that he did along the way. Um, but I, I launched my own podcast, the Confident Live Marketing Podcast, back in May this year after a long time procrastinating, trying to be perfect, which uh, doesn't really exist. You can't, you can't make perfect things. But I launched this as a live show first. So it's a live show. I then take that middle section and repurpose that into a podcast. And actually, the podcast is my main focus. That's the thing that uh, I really want to grow. And uh, it's a podcast about live streaming, hence why I do the live stream first. But then I turn that into a blog post, and I also turn that into lots of social media images as well. In fact, Amy Woods, uh, who's going to be one of David's guests later, um, she's uh, her company, Content 10X, or a sponsor of the podcast, and they produce uh, all the social media images for me, which is great. Uh, so I do solo shows, and I also have guest shows. But the, the thing that um, I'm really excited about is that I've only been doing this since May, but I've got 
well over a book's worth of material just from the stuff that I've had to create. Uh, because obviously, if you're going live and you've got a podcast, you have to create that content. If you have a guest on, uh, they're creating that content for you. But as what David was saying earlier, it's that is great. You've got all this content, but then of course you then have to turn that into a book. And it, it's uh, so what David was doing is he used a service like Rev.com. Uh, they used real human beings uh, to transcribe the audio of these of these videos. So you can just upload the video to Rev, and then they will then transcribe that. And so you've got all of that text. But then of course you then need to look at the text and. Uh, tweak it, you need to then turn it into a format that works for books, uh, written content. So that's something that you uh, need to think about doing. Um, yeah, so it's not it's not going to write the book for you. It's a great way, live video and podcasting is a great way to, to get that content. Uh, and then you need to then repurpose that. So you can even either do it yourself, like what David did, or you can get other people to do that for you. Um, but I can't remember the service that David used, but he used the service, um, I can't remember, it was Jet something, uh, to, that would basically take the book uh, in Word format or uh, the content and then turn it into uh, just a really nice, pretty, pretty design, um, which is really, really cool. I think that's probably what I would do because at the end of the day, there's only so many hours in the day and you want to make things as simple as possible. Uh, which is great. Yes. Yeah. So don't be shy. If you're thinking about writing a book, if you've got a podcast, you've got a live show, pop it in the comments and also let me know where in the world you are going, uh, you are watching live from. Just a little bit of, um, let, let you know what the tech that I'm using. I don't know whether David's going to be talking about what tech he's using. Um, I've got a Heil, Heil PR40 microphone here, which is a really nice dynamic microphone. Uh, but I didn't start off with using this. And so I always think if you're going to be podcasting or live streaming, don't feel that you need the really expensive high-tech stuff. I started off using the standard USB mic. I used the Blue Yeti microphone, uh, which is really, really nice. Um, make sure you have it nice and close to you. Put the gain down. It's fine. And uh, I didn't have any extra lights, but now I've got, uh, in fact, actually the lights are a bit too much in here, uh, but I've got three lights and... I've got one of these. Got a green screen as well, so I'm a bit zoomed zoomed out. Uh, but this is this is great uh, if you're going to be doing some uh, how-to videos. So uh, this is the Elgato uh, green screen, Elgato green screen. It's a roll-up green screen, really really cool. And I was actually using this this morning to create some animated gifs, so I could be able to quickly change the background and have a bit of fun with it as well. So I use these for my live streams uh, because actually because I work at home, this is um, this is a home office, but it's also uh, doubles up as a, as a guest bedroom as well. Uh, there's limited amount of stuff, uh, ways that I can change the background. So actually having a green screen means that I can do loads and loads of different things. Uh, in the background, it's, it's really good. The only problem about green screens is it they can look really, really fake, and you need to work really hard in getting the lighting sorted. So I haven't got it quite perfect yet, but this is something that I'm working on. But uh, definitely recommend the Elgato green screen. Uh, and then the other thing uh, that I think is really, really cool for live streaming, again by Elgato. Let's see if I can show you this is uh, the Stream Deck. So this is uh, just a little programmable keypad you plug into your computer. And as you can see there, I, you can actually, you can change the, the, the design on each key. And so for example, I've got uh, an icon there which will load up my camera settings app. I've got uh, ones for lights off and on. Uh, and then I've got uh, a button to go into my Confident Live marketing show. It's not all working at the moment because I haven't got uh, Ecamm Live on there, but I can then quickly change my scenes very, very easily there, which is really good. Um, then the, mic, the the webcam that I used, so I've actually, to begin with, I was using a Logitech C920 microphone. If you're wanting to start off, if you're starting off with, with live video, then definitely recommend the C920. It's really inexpensive and it works really, really well. Um, I now use the Logitech Rio, which is a 4K, um, I keep wanting to say microphone, 4K uh, webcam. 
Uh, so that's definitely uh, worth looking into. It's a bit more expensive, uh, but really, really good, good quality. But if you want it to, to be really cool, this is, the, um, this is what I want to do in the future, uh, is, is to use uh, an SLR camera, DSLR camera. So the one that I'm looking at getting is the Canon M50 camera, and that gives you a really nice quality. Um, I'm not sure whether that's what David is using, but uh, that worked really, really well. And I'm sure David can give some more information. But Samuel in LinkedIn is saying, does the book have CD or link to the internet? I'm not quite sure what you mean by that. Uh, there's definitely some um, a lot of resources in there. Um, but that, what I would recommend doing is, is just uh, go to marketingnowbook.com and also go to Amazon. You can find out a lot more information about that. And hopefully, uh, David will be able to get back to you uh, later. Right. Well, actually, I'm afraid I'm going to have to go because I need to pick kids up from school. Um, but I just want to just check that this live stream won't just go. Let's just message David. Uh. <laughs> so I'm just saying, are you there, David? I need to go now. Are you having problems? Um, let's see. Hopefully, we'll see that. Um, but we've now got 46 people watching live on LinkedIn, so um, I haven't put you off. I hope you found that interesting. Uh, if you've got any other, if you've got any questions for me in terms of my my uh, live setup here and some technology, if you've got any other questions uh, for me or for David later, um, just pop them in the comments. It would be lovely, lovely to hear from you and um, happy to answer those for you. I don't think if there's anything else uh, just before, uh, before I, I go uh, to share with you, um, the other the other way of of course live streaming is you don't have to do it from your computer. So you could actually go live from your phone. So whether you've got an Android phone or iPhone like this, uh, you can you know the cameras in the on these devices are amazing, and so you can just go native to Facebook Live um, or uh, YouTube Live. I think works only if you have a certain number of followers. LinkedIn Live at the moment is only in closed beta or beta if you're American, um, and yeah, you have to you can't actually go live. From your phone to LinkedIn Live yet, but from a from a from a phone, uh, but for Facebook you can. And one of the things I recommend is to, to actually get one of these. It's a for a tripod. It's a smartphone tripod mount. So you basically just put your your phone in there, and and it works really 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 well. Um, just gives you a lot more stability. Or the other thing that you could um, look at getting. These are really cool. These are IO cases. So. Um, Basically, uh, you just go to iographer.com, or I think you probably can get these from Amazon, and you slip your phone in, and um, just like this. Let's see if I can do it without breaking my phone. Ah, there we go. So you, you put your phone in there, and uh, then it basically gives you a lot more stability uh, when you're taking videos. Um, so you can actually very, very easily pan around like that. Uh, they're not too expensive either, and uh, they've got uh, a little little mount, tripod mount at the bottom or at the side. And the cool thing is, I don't know if you can see this, but at the top, uh, you've got these little little mounts here where you can put uh, an external microphone or uh, some lighting, which um, which is really good. So if, if you want a mobile uh, live video or, or, or just a mobile video setup, then I highly recommend the iographer. And this, by the way, this, despite the name, this is not just available for, this doesn't just work with iPhones. Uh, this is actually the universal case, so this will work with uh, most phones, Android and, uh, and iOS devices, which is, um, which is great. Um, oops, right, just, um, unplug my, there we go. Unplug my other monitor. Um, I think that's it. So I think I am actually going to have to go. I'm going to have to pick up the kids now. But hopefully, uh, when I close this down, that's not going to be the end of the stream. I don't think it is. Uh, but uh, so 
what I would suggest to you, if you're watching live, either on LinkedIn, Facebook, or Crowdcast, just hold hold tight. Uh, David, I, I'm pretty sure he will be back in uh, in five minutes uh, at uh, three o'clock uh, UK time. That will be hopefully I'll get this right. 10 a.m. Eastern, 7 a.m. Pacific, and uh, hopefully he he will be back with some more guests. But uh, there's obviously a few technical problems in the background. But I hope you don't mind. I hope you found my um, utterings of the last half hour helpful. Um, if you want to find out more about me, if you want to connect with me, then just go to iag.me. That's my website. Uh, and also, if just check out my, my podcast, which is all about uh, live video. It's either with the confidence and the mindset side of things, uh, with the technology, the tech and the gear, or the content marketing. And uh, just search in, in Apple Podcasts or Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts from. It's called the Market, the Confidence Live Marketing Podcast. But I'm going to go. Uh, I will see you all, hopefully, very soon. Bye.